Hi, I'm Laura, and I am a member of the Watershed Detectives Club. We have been going on weekly field explorations all year to learn about streams and watersheds. In this video, we will share with you some of the amazing things we have discovered during our investigations. Waterfalls are a common stream featured in the Ashokan watershed. We have found several of them during our stream investigations this year. A waterfall is a part of the stream where water flows over the edge of exposed hard rock. They typically form in the upper sections of a stream. As water flows over the exposed rock, the softer rock is eroded more quickly creating a step in the stream bed which then grows larger over time. A plunge pool forms at the base of the waterfall, which is continuously deepened by the power of the water. Eventually, the hard rock layer will be undercut and will collapse. This process will be repeated over time, causing the waterfall to retreat or move upstream and grow taller. All year long, we've been visiting as many streams as possible here at the Ashoka Center to try and figure out what drainage pattern they form. What we have noticed is that the smaller streams make their way into the bigger ones, where the tree-like pattern emerges. This pattern is known as dendritic. It's similar to how the branches on a tree look, or the veins on this leaf. We have highlighted all the streams we have visited on this map. Here we see the Esopus Creek as it comes out of the Ashokan Reservoir. As the creek flows southeast, you can see the smaller streams connect with it. The result is a dendritic or tree-like pattern. The Tungor Kill, Moss Brook, and Cathedral Brook were all a lot of fun to explore. Hey Cameron, what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out which way the reservoir is, but I can't figure it out because I don't know how to align the map. Oh, we learned an easy way to orient a map in watershed detectors. Would you like me to show you? Sure. An easy way to line up or orient a map is to use a compass with it. First set the compass dial so that north is aligned with the direction of travel arrow. Next you place the compass flat on the map so the base plate lines up with the side border. Then you simply rotate the map with the compass on it until the red end of the needle points north on the compass dial. That's it, your map is now aligned with what you see in real life. It's oriented. That is a cool trick. And look, there is the Silver Street, so the reservoir must be that way. Yeah, it's easy.
Hey Nick, what are you guys doing? We're searching the stream pool to see if there's any wildlife in it. And why are you doing that? Healthy streams provide a great habitat for living things such as crayfish, insects, amphibians, and fish. So we are trying to figure out if the stream is healthy or not. Have you found anything? I found this cool insect and I'm using the seal guide to identify it. I believe it's a dragonfly larva. I have seen several young fish today and I am trying to catch one to further observe it. Wow, this tree must be healthy then. Some common fish found in our watershed streams include black-nosed dace and brook, brown, and rainbow trout. They need cool, clear, and clean water in order to thrive. Smaller and younger fish use the pools found in smaller streams as a safe habitat. Pools provide ample food, good, cool, well-oxygenated water, and protection from larger predators. We used an underwater camera to view the fish in their natural environment. Here we see the common black-nosed dace. These are smaller, minnow-like fish that typically grow to only a few inches long. Notice the black horizontal stripe that runs along the entire side of their bodies. These trout hatched from eggs, deposited on the stream bed by their mother, who made the, the long and difficult journey upstream to ensure that they would have a chance at a good start to life. how all these rocks got here? I believe I have the answers for you. You see, water is the ability to pick things up and move them as it runs along the Earth's surface. And this is how it shapes our Earth. Do you mean water can even pick up some of these really big rocks? Those really big bars, like rocks are called boulders, and even they can be moved by water. If water can move boulders, then why are all the rocks here stuck in place? You see, you need a lot of energy to move these bigger particles, but the water is always moving something. You mean the water is moving things right now? It sure is! When water is moving rocks or any other objects, it is called the stream's load. Streams have three main types of load. They have the dissolved load, the suspended load, and the bed load. Oh, so the dissolved load is kind of like salt water? It is! The dissolved load is the one that we can't see but it's always there. A dissolved load is mostly dissolved ions that come from chemical weathering. And the suspended load, is that when things float in the water? It, it, it sure is! Have you seen a muddy stream? That mud is the suspended load. And how about the bed load? How does that work? Ah, uh, yes, the bed load. You see, we are standing on the stream's bed. Oh, so all of these bigger rocks are part of the bed load? They are. Can you guess how they move when the stream has enough energy to move them? Hmm. Do the rocks slide along the bottom? Do they bounce? Yes and yes, they do both. Remember how we said that the bigger rocks are called boulders? Uh-huh. Well, you see, all the rocks we see around us are called sediment. Sedi cl scientists classify sediment particles by their size. So bigger rocks are called boulders, so what are the smaller rocks called? Oh, I remember hearing the word cobble something. Is that the next smaller size? Yes, it is. Cobble is one of the bigger rocks, although they are still smaller than boulders. Do one, of you, do one of you know what is a rock that's smaller than cobble? Is it called gravel? Nice! Yes, it is! I remember hearing about these now. Is sand the next smaller size? Bingo! And then silt and then clay? Ding, ding, ding! Oh, now I remember learning about clothes, too. Silt and clay are part of the suspended globe, right? Because they're the smallest and you less need to be carried. Wow! I see you both already knew this information. Okay, so if silt and clay are part of the suspended globe, then, are the, are the rest all part of the bed load? Well, sand can actually be transported in the bed load and the suspended load, but yes. And these bitter particles move by rolling and bouncing? Yes! The bouncing is actually called saltation, and it is when the particles are picked up and carried a short distance before hitting the stream's bottom and bouncing back up again. Cool! Kind of like some of the summer <laughs> Exactly! And is there a name for the rolling? Of course! The rolling and sliding of the big, bigger particles happens during the strongest flows. So think of a flood. 
and it is called traction movement. So like a tractor pushing the brake? Spot on. You can see evidence of this just by looking around. Just look right over here. See how the rocks are stacked up against each other? Oh, cool. I know. That stacked up pattern is actually called embarkation, and once you know what it is, you'll start to notice it in streams all over. Well, thank you so much for talking to us about how sediment moves in streams. Yes, thank you. I feel like I learned so much. I'm always happy to talk about sediment transfer of friends. Hey, do you guys want to go for a walk around the stream to find each particle sediment size? Yeah! yeah. Today, let's find some shade. Wow, it does feel a lot better under this tree. Hey, do you know what kind of tree this is? It's an eastern hemlock. I learned to identify them using this field guide. You can tell because that they have these small needles which have two white lines underneath. They also make tiny pine cones. Believe it or not, these are full grown. Yeah, they like to grow in moist soil and are often found near streams. The shade they provide keeps the water cool for trout and other fish. They even help the melting of our snowpack in the spring. Yeah, its roots also help hold the soil in place and prevent erosion, especially on the steeper banks of mountain streams. This helps keep the water clean. Cool, seems like hemlocks are an important part of the watershed ecosystem. Hey, what's this white stuff on the back of these needles? Uh-oh, looks like the hemlock will be adult to this year. It's an invasive species insect that steals nutrients from the tree. If the tree gets infected with it, then it could die. Hope that doesn't happen. Sounds like that could be really bad for the streams and critters that live in them. The invasive hemlock woolly adelgid is a tiny aphid-like insect that damages hemlock trees by sucking out the moisture and nutrients from the base of the needles. They arrived in the United States from Japan on infested landscape trees and are now spreading throughout the lower portions of central and eastern New York State. Because of their size, they are hard to spot. You are more likely to notice their woolly egg sacs, which look like the ends of a Q-tip. Each white sac can contain up to 300 eggs. The newly born insects spread by crawling to nearby hemlock trees and attach themselves to the underside of the needles. If their spread is not contained, these invasive insects could have a devastating effect on the hemlock population in our watershed streams. a place where a deer slept. You can tell because all the grass and sticks and stuff are pushed down around it. And there's a spot where it probably scratched. And um, we also found some scat. These are 
deer tracks in a deer scratch. So do deer use the riparian zone? Yes. Why do you think they like the riparian zone? Because it's a nice um, area by a body of water and good cover. Good cover? Do they use the water for anything? Yes. Drinking. Found more deer poop and in the riparian zone. What's the science name for that? Scat. Scat. And what does that tell us? That deer has been here. Why do you think deer like the riparian zone? Because they need water and water's over here. Yeah, there's water right all along here. Do you think the riparian zone provides good cover? Yeah. And maybe some food for them? Uh-huh. Because I think they eat these? I don't know. Well, they eat grass. They eat grass. They might eat some seeds or buds, twigs, fruit, berries, whatever they can find. When streams flowing down steeper slopes empty into bigger streams, they slow down and deposit much of the sediment load. These deposits create a feature known as an alluvial fan. It is called that because when viewed from above, it has the shape of an open hand fan. Here, we see a tributary flowing into the Asupiskeek. Notice a triangular or fan-shaped deposit of stream cobbles and other sediment. The smallest stream has cut a new channel through the alluvial fan. Alluvium is a term used for sediment deposits made by streams. We sure learned a lot at Watershed Detectives Club this year, Jesper, don't you think? Yeah, it's been so much fun going out into the field each week and learning about streams and watersheds. Can't wait to do it again next year. Yeah, me too. Hi, I'm Isaac. Well, and I like the Watershed Detectives because you get to come down to the stream, be with your friends, and learn some cool stuff that you probably would not learn in school. Hi, my name is Walker. I like the Watershed Detectives program because you get to learn about streams and you can play cool games with your friends. Hi, my name is Luke. I like the Watershed pro program because you can go on hikes, learn about streams, dreams and play cool games with your friends. Hi, I'm Ty, and what I like about the Watershed Detectives is exploring the woods and, and looking and learning about critters. Hi, I'm Milo, and I like the Watershed Detectives program because I like what I find in nature. Hi, I'm Spencer, and I like Watershed Detectives because I like the interesting things that I find in the water. My name is Stefan, and I like the wa I like watershed detectives because um I like to learn about trees. Hi, I'm Yana, and I like watershed detectives because we get to learn a lot of new things and do a lot of fun activities. Hi, I'm Lily, and I like watershed detectives because I like being outside with my friends. Hi, my name is Sadie, and I like watershed detectives because I like learning about the importance of streams. Hi, my name is Jesper, and I like watershed detectives because I just think that hiking around and uh, Doing all the activities we, we get to do is really fun. Hi, my name's Nick and I like stream studies because I like to investigate the creatures in the stream. I'm Laura and I like watershed detectives because I like spending time in the woods and hanging around streams. I also like playing games. Hi, my name is Nicholas and I like studying streams and hiking in the woods. My name is Susanna and I like watershed detectives because I like seeing all sorts of little animals. Hi, I'm Cam and I like watershed detectives because we go on hikes in the woods. Hi, I'm Sophia and I like watershed detectives because I like learning about streams and stream features. Watershed Detectives Rock! Produced with the support of the Shokin Watershed Stream Management Program, Cornell Cooperative Extension of Ulster County, 
and the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. Thank you! Yeah! Oh wait, there it is, there it is. I got eyes on the big boys.